Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us this morning. We want you to know that later in the worship service, we'll be celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, and we invite you to be ready with some bread and some juice so that you can join along. As you join us today, if you come through YouTube, we welcome you to sign in if you'd like and say good morning. Come, let us worship our living God. Forgive us, O oh God, if we have taken the gifts of life for granted, without giving thanks, without sharing. Forgive us, Holy One, if we have refused to hear your voice within our hearts or through the prophets of our day. Help us to put our lives in order so that we will be worthy to share in the bounty of your realm. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. As far as the East is from the West, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us now greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace to everybody. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning, church. And now a reading from Isaiah 35, verses 4 through 6. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, and he will come to save you. Then the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf be unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus heals with a touch. In our gospel lesson today from the gospel of Mark, we hear about Jesus meeting a person who couldn't hear and couldn't talk. Jesus then put his fingers into his ears and spat and touched his tongue. Now, not everything Jesus did is an example for us to follow. If after this you run and give your brother or sister a wet willy, you can't say, well, Jesus did it, so can I. Not everything Jesus did is an example 
But everything Jesus did teaches us about who God is. I have a question for you. When was the last time you gave someone you loved a hug? You know, I was thinking about this story and it reminded me of during the pandemic when once I went months without touching a single human person. And I remember the first time I was hugged by an old friend and how wonderful that felt. I wonder if there's someone in your life you went a long time without seeing and how wonderful it was to see them again and maybe give them a hug. I think maybe, maybe that's a glimpse of how God loves us. In our story today, it wasn't enough for Jesus just to wave his hand. Jesus wanted to know that this person felt loved by God. The love Jesus was giving to him in his healing touch. In church, we remember Remember how God loves us with this healing touch when we are baptized and feel the touch. In communion when we get the body and blood touched to our tongues and lips. In the passing of the peace when we embrace one another as God has embraced us. May you today feel the healing touch of Christ. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Father, touch our ears today with these words from your Son, Jesus. May we feel your presence today by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven. He sighed and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I know we know this, but I'm just going to take a minute to remind us that Jesus did not speak English. Jesus spoke Aramaic. And Ephatha, that is Aramaic for be opened. He touched the deaf and mute man's ears and tongue, and he said, be opened. And then the deaf man could hear, and his muteness was gone, and he could speak. His life was open. He was able to be part of the world in a new way. Be opened. Where do we need to hear this word from the Lord today? Where are we closed off? Where has life closed us off? What do we need to be healed from and open to in our lives? One Sunday morning in Florida, I was driving to preach at a church who just had had this big issue that caused their pastor to be removed. The presbytery asked me to come in and preach for a month to give them some stability as they tried to get their heads around what would come next. The church was pretty far away. It took me an hour and a half to get there. The first Sunday I went, I could see how the church was split with people actually sitting physically on one side or the other, depending on their opinions about what had happened. They were not happy to see me. I was a stranger. Some of them tried to be nice. Others asked me if I knew what had happened and why, and others were just too angry to even make eye contact. On the second week, I was up early driving on the highway when the rain started. Now, Florida rain can be hard and strong and intense, if you've ever driven in it, you probably remember that experience. But I thought, well, I'm okay. I'm a veteran. I've lived here four years. Now I know what this rain is. And then I saw it in my rear view mirror, a car spinning toward me at high speed, the driver having lost control. There was nowhere to go. He hit me and I was likely that no one else was coming. I slid into the median, which was grass, and prayed out loud that the car would stop and my tires would stick in the mud before I ended up on the other side of the highway. It was traumatic. The police came, the young man was very upset and apologetic. Our care was very damaged and undrivable. I called John and he called the church to leave a message that I wouldn't be there for worship. And he came and got me about an hour from home. I remember I asked him to get this huge sign that was supposed to be in the back of the van so we could take it back home. And the policeman said, you see those little pieces of wood all over the road? When your car was hit, the window broke and the sign sort of exploded into a hundred pieces. Now, healing from that experience was its own story. But the story I really want to tell you this morning is what happened when I went back to the church the next week. The people who had been so hurt and so closed off and so angry greeted me at the door together. We were worried, they said. We're so glad to see that you're okay. We had worship last week and when it came time for the sermon, we just got up and prayed for you. We're having a lunch today after church and we'd like you to stay and celebrate. Valentine's Day with us. 
Somehow, in the face of a new problem, the church remembered who they were together. They prayed together. They planned a celebration together, and they chose to reach out to someone who was still a stranger. It felt like the body of Christ was letting its own fractures knit back together to be who they could be. We celebrated the Lord's Supper that day, and I watched as people who had been unable to look at each other pass the bread and the cup across the aisles and let the Holy Spirit make wholeness in the place of brokenness. They were open once again. Be opened. May our hearts and minds and bodies and souls be opened to the healing that Christ is offering us wherever we may find it. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus says, come to me, all ye that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Holy God, we praise you and give you thanks for the gift of your creation. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. We give you thanks for the bread and the cup. Wherever we are this morning, may we be united in this meal, united in the body of Christ to proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. May we hear the words of institution meant for each of us and all of us as we share together in this meal. The Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. O Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. May the bread and the cup that we have before us this day truly be a meal of communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love. 
Let us pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken in love of us. The cup of the new covenant, Christ's blood poured out in love of us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. O Lord, may all who have shared this day be so nurtured and nourished by the meal you have provided that they might be strengthened to love and serve you. Amen. Let us go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. not close our hearts to each other while we stand so far apart with the road ahead uncertain time both mast and marked may we know the bonds between us remain stayed and steady still our embrace is distant waiting New landscapes must be built. We'll find new ways to sing together across the miles. And one day we'll be together after these trials. Hopes lie dashed and futures tossed We will know our strength and trust our ties Our future and our hearts We'll find new ways to sing together Across the miles And one day we'll be together After these trials together 